So, welcome back. So, continuing with our module 4 which are the heterogeneous catalysis, we go to the third lecture. So, we have seen the shape selectivity of zeolites and uh, we have also seen what are zeolites, what are the catalyst, how the reactor uh, is designed, catalyst is designed, the shape and size, morphology. We have seen these factors. Now, let us see one of such example, the shape selectivity is used. That is in today's lecture, we will discuss the production of ethyl benzene. So, what we will discuss here, we will see this example where a shape selectivity of zeolite is exploited to obtain a certain product which is ethyl benzene. So, we will discuss up two different catalysts, the ZSM5 and MCM22. So, these are trade names given after the companies where it was patented. So, this is one is from uh, this mobile company, M stands for mobile. So, then uh, there are two things, one is the catalyst development. So, catalyst development, uh, there is some company which does it and let in this case it is mobile because that is M, M stands for mobile and then MCM also is mobile. Uh, issue is after that, now who licenses the process? Like the, there is a process where you can produce ethyl benzene. So, not uh, you cannot just take away a process which is available in literature and start uh, producing ethyl benzene. So, you have to take some license from this company. So, based on these companies, they name these processes. So, like in this case, we have two processes where we will discuss the production of ethyl benzene. One is the Monsanto. Monsanto, you must be knowing, the Monsanto chemicals. These are a very famous company which actually also produce hybrid variety of seeds while the chemicals remain its uh, parent company. So, this is Monsanto Lumus. Lumus is another company which actually works into the process design. So, together they have uh, licensed one process where the entire alkylization take place in liquid phase and another process is with the mobile badger process, uh, the gas phase. So, there are the phases are different in both this process, but both these processes are used prevalently in industry. So, what is the basic equation, the expression where the ethyl benzene is formed? So, ethyl benzene is formed by the alkylation of benzene with ethene. So, if you see the reaction is uh, exothermic. So, you have benzene and ethene combining to become ethyl benzene. But the reaction looks so simple, but it is not like that. It is not that simple because other than ethyl benzene, you may also form diethyl benzene or other polyethyl benzene. So, the al alkylation that is what we were coming to, the alkylation of benzene with ethene produces side reactions that is formation of polyethyl benzene. So, it does not mean that A plus B will always give C, A plus B can also combine and form C, D, E, F the different compounds. So, here the different compounds are polyethyl benzene. So, diethyl benzene is one of them, then triethyl benzene, trimethyl benzene, all this. So, overall they are all clubbed together and known as polyethyl benzene. But uh, still we would not worry because we have something. Now, there are two processes which we can work with. One is you should have a selective enough catalyst and second is produce lesser and lesser of this poly, PEB I will call is polyethyl benzenes. Even if they are formed, the polyethyl benzenes are recycled and converted to ethyl benzene by trans alkylation. So, alkylization reactions as above are exothermic. They are favored by a low temperature and a high pressure. We will see that what is the equilibrium composition. But the transalkylization reaction which actually converts the polyethylene benzene back to your uh, ethyl benzene, that is not dependent on either temperature or pressure. That will be dependent, I mean it is, I can say it is all independent of temperature and pressure. So, that is a good thing. So, it is virtually independent of temperature and pressure. So, what are the different reactions which can occur? Like if I do this, one, there can also be dealkylization reaction, isomerization reaction, oligomerization of ethene because you are uh, adding ethene and uh, benzene. So, uh, ethene can itself oligomerize or it can uh, benzene instead of producing uh, ethyl benzene. It can also produce isomers of ethyl benzene or uh, diethyl benzene. So, but if you see the oligomerization, if I the latter part which I have written it means two molecules of ethene are coming together. This process is the initial step in the synthesis of the majority of heavy byproducts because uh, from here actually you have butene formation and butene you get these compounds, butyl benzenes, diphenyl compounds and heavy aromatics. So, this is the starting point of getting uh, the heavy byproducts. The heavy byproduct is one of them. So, these heavy byproducts are also a part of the undesired product which is formed in ethyl benzene. 
So, this butyl benzene, diphenyl benzene are thus formed as contaminants in the ethyl benzene product or fuel. So, it means that controlling the ethene oligomerization has been a significant challenge in the development of catalyst for ethyl benzene. So, we have to then design a catalyst. We design a catalyst in such a manner which only allow the ethyl benzene to pass through its pore so that it becomes selective enough and does not allow the other products to pass through. So, this is what uh, the reaction is all about. You have benzene, you are adding ethene, you bond ethyl benzene. So, this is our desired product, but sometimes what happens this product. So, if I say this is A, if this is B, this is C. Sometimes this B and C are in equilibrium with each other because it may add up ethene. It may add up ethene and form diethyl benzene. And this diethyl benzene further add up another ethene to form polyethyl benzene. Or it may add benzene to it and in equilibrium it may form something like this diethyl benzene. So, it means uh, you have uh, um, this reaction we need to do this we do not want to do this. Okay? So, we need to do this reaction and we need to do this reaction. So, this reaction of converting the diethyl benzene polyethyl benzene to the ethyl benzene is called as trans alkylation. There, so, this particular reaction name we will be taking it number of times the trans alkylation reaction is simply a isomerization reaction as I told you they do not depend on any temperature and pressure. So, if suppose this particular graph shows the equilibrium composition at temperature of 500 degrees Celsius and 1 bar pressure. So, if you have a equilibrium composition then what they did they plotted the ethene to benzene mole ratio versus mole percent converted or reacted we can say. So, you see that uh, benzene, so uh, lower uh, ethene to benzene mole ratio, you have higher conversion. So, it means that you add less of ethene, more of benzene, then you have higher conversion. Why? Because see, this is the ethyl benzene concentration. So, this is increasing. So, your concentration is increasing with the decrease in the benzene concentration. So, I can say this, if I want to draw a line, so, I can say this particular line, this part is the favorable part where you can do the reaction because if you go ahead, if you take a higher ethene to benzene molar ratio, what happens is you see the diethyl benzene formation then takes up, it dominates and ethyl benzene then decreases. This particular graph I have not drawn to scale, but somehow, somehow it is said that it will decrease very sharp. And moreover, if you see selectivity also decreases. So, it means in both ways selectivity and conversion wise, you should have the molar ratio of ethene and benzene in this shaded region. So, this particular region it can be varying, I will not draw it in as a completely because many, uh, the, because we will see later there are some uh, industry which actually are able to conduct ethene to benzene lower than this, but we will see that later. But from this graph, it is quite evident that this is that particular re region. So, I will draw maybe a dotted line to make it clear. So, the left side of this is the working, it is the working condition for the conversion of benzene to ethyl benzene. So, this is what it says the conversion of benzene increases with increasing ethene benzene ratio. So, that is what it is saying that if you increase it, it will increase, but later on it decreases. But the selectivity then towards benzyl benzene decreases. So, if you increase the conversion as your consumption of benzene increases, so selectivity here decreases. Excess benzene is added to minimize the formation of polyalkylate. So, obviously, excess benzene means what? Excess benzene means you are getting this ratio towards this side. So, obviously, it will minimize the formation of polyalkylate compound because to this left of this line you have primarily ethyl benzene to be more. So, this is diethyl benzene, this is ethyl benzene and uh, this is benzene. Okay. So, usually the benzene to ethene ratio industrial settings is around 2 to 16. So, if, it, if I tell it 2, it means you take the inverse of it. So, uh, it is 0.5 and uh, 16 is much, much less than 0.5. So, that is why I drew a line at 0.5. So, 0 0.5 and lower than 0 0.5. Okay. So, that is what it is. So, now what is the process development? So, this is fine. We know the temperature and pressure. We know the temperature and the higher pressure it is favored and a lower 
and the temperature also we know it is exothermic in nature. Now then prepare the catalyst, how to design a catalyst? Now let us see the history of the catalyst development. Usually the acid catalyst which has acidic side promote the alkylization process. For example, metal chlorides like trifluoroborane or aluminum chloride and mineral acids such as HF and sulfuric acid are conventional alkylized catalysts because they have acidic sites or acidic catalyst. The conventional, for example, if you notice the, con the alkylization of benzene with ethene in our process usually carried out by aluminum chloride, okay, metal chloride. So procedures, as I told you, there are two process. The entire process, the reaction may occur in the liquid phase with the catalyst. So the catalyst may be in the form of a distinct fluid phase that is the union carbide badger process or homogeneous form which is the Monsanto Lumos process. The Monsanto Lumos process and the union carbide badger process. So the alkylation catalysts are effective but they have some disadvantages. So we are talking about alkylation catalyst but they have some disadvantages. What are those? They are corrosive. It will necessitate the use of specific materials in the reactor phase of the process, glass line, brick line or hastelloy. Utilization of such catalysts will cause waste disposal issues. Because if you have a catalyst in a separate phase, you have to separate this catalyst out. If you want to separate this catalyst out, that means either you have to burn off the coke formation on the catalyst surface. So I mean whatever it is, you are adding up the cost of the inventory. So continuing with the catalyst development, so there have been several attempts to design a catalyst regard taking to two aspects, the waste disposal. So therefore, this innovative process is based on zeolite catalyst came to the fore. So these were developed in 1970s and 1980s. So zeolites are non-corrosive and environmentally safe. Zeolites are nothing but uh, they are made of aluminium and silicon. A commercially viable method because the commercially viable method which is nowadays used, the entire alkylation process takes place in the vapor phase. So in the vapor phase, they utilize this catalyst that is ZSM5 catalyst which I have already told you, ZSM5, 5 indicates the pore size. So this is developed in 1970s and still going strong by mobile badger. So majority of the plants constructed after 1980 use this technique. So the vapor phase alkylization is a solution for the production of ethyl benzene. But the issue is the catalyst deactivates quite quickly due to the coke deposition. As I told you, it's in the gas phase process, so coke will be deposited very easily, so it will be deactivated. It says that in barely weeks it goes, thereafter you have to replace it. Then obviously, if, if there's some problem, you need to work on it, to improve upon it. So then, instead of gas phase, what ExxonMobil did with, when they did, uh, developed this mobile company, developed this MCM now it is called ExxonMobil, they developed a new liquid phase alkylation method based on a highly selective zeolite known as MCM22. So it, here there is a very tricky part, very important R&D effort which paid this, uh, helped us to conduct this in liquid phase. That is they found it is to be very active for alkylization but inactive for oligomerization. Now we were discussing it forms oligomers of ethene very easily, so that is where it succeeds that it prevents the oligomerization. So you can op also operate at low benzene to ethene ratio. So it means you can uh, add up more of ethene. So earlier I gave that plot where I, I wrote ethene to benzene ratio. So it means low ethene benzene ethene means higher ethene to benzene ratio you can use. So more amount of alkylation you can conduct. So it is greatest yield because of the low benzene to ethene ratio and product purity among all the ethyl benzene processes. So this is more or less an improvement from the earlier process on the gas phase process. So just remember the gas phase process, the catalyst uses RSM5 and from the liquid phase process, the catalyst uses MCM22. So let us see this catalyst one by one. So first RSM5 catalyst. What is RSM5 catalyst? It is a composed of several pentacyl unit. I will discuss what is this pentacyl unit linked together by oxygen bridges to form pentacyl chains. So pentacyl unit consists of 8 5 membered rings, so I already told you 8 MR, 5 MR that is called membered rings MR. So here it is 5 membered rings, chemical formula is something like this, sodium, aluminium 96 minus 192, 16 water, 
So it is patented by Mobile Oil Company in 1975. It is a synthetic zeolite which contains silica and alumina with the ratio of silica greater than alumina. So in this case, we have a zeolite where the ratio of silica to alumina is greater. Okay, so silica is more in quantity as compared to alumina. So these are ZSM5 because it has a pore diameter of 5 Armstrong and it has more than 5 different uh, silica to aluminum ratio. So you have different ratios present together in this entire crystalline structure. But the, then as obvious if you synthesize a new catalyst it also comes with its own design advantages. So design advantage is high production cost and a complex production cost. The production is costly as well as it is complex. So it is influenced by time and temperature. So those who are working in heterogeneous catalysts, it may be known that these catalysts are not easy to make. So it is involving number of steps. So each step actually uh, increases the price of the catalyst because you have some additional operations. So this is a ZSM catalyst. Please go through this open access book or chapter where they describe the nanostructure zeolites MFI type ZSM5. Now if you see, I was talking about the basic structure. Just look at the left hand side of the slide. So these are the elements. So element constitutes of the ZSM zeolite. So I have not drawn the other elements. It is only the aluminum and the silica it is present. The other elements are not there. So uh, this is a basic ring, 5 membered ring. As I told you, this is a type 51. So A is the type 51 SBU. So zeolites are known by 3 letter based on the International Zeolite Association framework. So this is actually this then uh, actually couples with another uh, ring, 5 membered ring and forms this B. What is this B? B is a pentacyl group. So this is a pentacyl group. Pentacyl group in the every face have a pentacyl or a 5 membered ring that is called a pentacyl group. Now this pentacyl group then arranges itself in sort of chain. So this one this is the one pentacyl group, the second one, third one, one, two, three. So these are pentacyl group arranged in chains. Now these chains when they form in layers of tetrahedra, they have an opening. This is that opening. So they will form this final catalyst. Now this catalyst if I draw down in terms of three dimensional images, so you can see there are channels of ZSM as obvious from this figure. So you have sinusoidal channels which are here and you, you have the sinusoidal ch channels here and you have the straight channels here. So all the sinusoidal and straight channels, this is one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is this way. So you are uh, looking at this on, on top of it. Then these are all sinusoidally connected with each other. Okay. So uh, in between you have the silicon and aluminium. So this particular uh, region, it has been uh, magnified here and so this is the cage and uh, through here the molecules may pass or dissolve and this is characterized by the channel length. So you have sinusoidal channels to be of the dimension 0 0.51, 0 0.55, 0 0.06 nanometer cube. Then you have point uh, right channels, those who are straight channels. So you have these channels like these are the sinusoidal channels which are of this shape. Right channels means you have these channels, right channels, straight channels. These are of this dimension and the intersection of the channels where the channels intersect each other has a volume of 0 0.9 nanometer cube. So this is where uh, the, the entire process of catalyst development lay. These are the channels of the RSM5 which makes it uh, suitable for the alkylation of benzene. Now let us see the MCM2. So MCM2 catalyst is a bit different. So if you have uh, this MCM group, this silica to oxygen ratio is 72 for 144. In this case, this is a um, this is some work, you should uh, go through it. This is a crystal structure of MCM22 and is delaminated. Delaminated means you just take out some of the atoms and just rearrange the layers. So this ITQ2 is something like that, it is named after that. So you just do some additional processing steps. So this is a part of research, it has been done. So if you see there are two different pore systems are available. If you see intersecting sinusoidal channel system extending in two dimension. So uh, these are 10 MR, 10 membered ring inside the layer. See that these are the 10 membered ring between the layer. So inside this is one layer, so this is one layer this is the other layer. Okay. So inside the layer you have the ring 
within the layer you also have the link then you may also have some hexagonal prism so this is the basic the so important issue here is the super cage if you see this one which there an improvement delaminated derivative so here they have just modified uh, you know some silica to oxygen atoms so this they say a super cage uh, region which is i mean it is open so half cape and full cage super cage so total uh, length wise on the z direction is 18 armstrong so the the inner diameter is 7.1 armstrong and the height is 18.2 armstrong okay so pores are accessible so obviously wherever there are pores the eight membered rings or 10 membered rings the pores are accessible toward the 10 member ring aperture so i'm not going into detail of the structure but mainly this uh, yellow and red line are the silica and the aluminum and uh, these are the main atoms in this case so you just go through it this article you will find more some crystal data and also the figure in it moving ahead so this is actually the uh, no this mcm22 structure so this 1 micrometer the length so this is 1 micrometer in length this is for the mcm22 catalyst this is the itq2 catalyst so this is 2 micrometer in length although uh, they should have i mean they, if you can compare only when the two scales are similar but here the scales are different so i mean you can see this so this is what the structure looks like micrometer so from this you can actually tell the pore size the pore aperture so if you go beyond this micrometer to let's say nanometer range you can then easily observe the pore structure so now we come to the ethyl benzene which is the uh, monsanto lumus process so the monsanto lumus uses the aluminum chloride catalyst it's a liquid phase alkylation so it will generate a significant amount of ethyl benzene so here aluminum chloride and hcl this is the catalyst system in this process which acts as a catalyst promoter so hcl is given as ethyl chloride in minute amounts so what it is here you have the catalyst system coming inside so alcl3 catalyst complex it has a catalyst promoter that is hcl so they don't add hcl directly they will add it in the um, as a ethyl chloride in benzene okay now uh, issue is here you have the fresh benzene getting inserted so let us go to the step step then see one by one i will just go through one by one each operation so here just remember the catalyst is fed here catalyst is aluminum chloride catalyst complex with ethene so in this case if you see hcl is not there but it is present in ethyl chloride so moving ahead so now the dry benzene catalyst complex and ethyl chloride is introduced in the alkylation reactor it's a empty vessel with a corrosion resistant brick inside lining ethene is passed into the reactor's liquid alkylation occurs in the liquid state what did i told you so it means this benzene is getting uh, inserted this is the feed the benzene so the only issue is that benzene needs to be dried completely even if there is a little bit of water in the benzene it will deactivate the aluminum chloride catalyst this is very important so catalyst i have sent earlier now what you do is you send ethene here so this part these two parts if i want to number them one and this is two these are all you know part of uh, the benzene drying system so the benzene is dried because it is sent fresh benzene it is dried so water is taken out from here some reflux you can say like a distillation then benzene is sent here and if there are some off gases which are coming from the reactor side which you see it's entering here they are then let off after incineration of gas but the major the, the so the benzene comes out here it is mixed with the aluminum chloride catalyst and fed into the alkylator so this is the alkylator this is column 3 this is the alkylator so alkylator has everything ethene ethyl chloride in benzene aluminum chloride and the benzene so all this when reacted at 440 kelvin and 10 bar so if you react this alkylation will occur in the liquid phase then what happens let us see now to prevent the oligomerization of ethene and the creation of polyethylene benzene so the benzene to ethene ratio is around 2 to 2.5 so 2 means you take the ratio of reciprocal of 2 it is 1 upon 2 is 0.5 so i told you at 0.5 only your composition the conversion will be the maximum so that was to prevent it the ratio of 2 to 2.5 is 
present. So now this benzene I have already told, now it comes out here. Now what happens is, so you have ethyl benzene coming out here. The ethyl benzene, once it comes out here, so what it is? The ethyl benzene and the other polyethylene benzene, polyethyl benzene, if you see reactor effluent, if you read this reactor effluent is combined with polyethyl benzene from recycled stream and sent to the transalkylation reactor. Okay. So, now there are some polyethylene benzene already formed from the previous cycle. This you add up with the ethyl benzene and the other polyethylene benzene which is formed after this alkylation, it is sent to this transalkylation reactor. Okay. Getting? So, the remaining what gases will the remaining will be only the benzene or the ethene component, they will come out here. Benzene, the boiling point is not much, you know. So, it will come out and it will actually combine with another stream which is coming out from the product side. So, let us move ahead and let us see. So, in the next step, polyethylene benzene, primarily di and triethyl benzene are transformed to ethyl benzene in the. So, when you PEB recycle plus all the PEB from this alkylation reactor, it is sent to this transalkylator reactor. So, you have the ethyl benzene formed here. So, you have the ethyl benzene formed here. This ethyl benzene is sent here. So, you will still have other than ethyl benzene some benzene also. So, here you flash it and you separate the remaining benzene here. So, you separate out this remaining benzene here, it goes here and then goes to this finally to in this process where is the grass scrubber is present. So, now what you do is now you have the catalyst also along with the liquid state. So, here you separate out the catalyst. Now you have only ethyl benzene coming here because all the polyethyl benzene has been converted to ethyl benzene, you are coming out here. So, so it means the recycle of the soluble catalyst complex in the takes place, so recycle catalyst recycle takes place and it comes out again back to the alkylator reactor. Then moving ahead in the final part. So, what happens is in the final part the alkylate is treated with caustic. So, once it this alkylate comes here from this side, it is treated with caustic because you have HCl added. So, you will want to neutralize with caustic. Once the neutralization is complete, you will get the ethyl benzene. The distillation process is then again used to remove the ethyl benzene product which still contains benzene and polyethylene benzene. So, um, issue is uh, you may say that uh, you will get uh, ethyl benzene here, but no, you will still have some part of polyethylene benzene here, still again it is sent to a distillation column and you separate out the ethyl benzene from the polyethyl benzene. So, what are the three different aspects we have seen? First is your benzene drying, this is the benzene drying system, the benzene drying, then the reactor, alkylator reactor, then the transalkylation reactor, then separate out the unreacted components and then sent it to a catalyst recovery system. So, it recovers the catalyst and sent it back to the alkylator. The remaining sent to the neutralizer where it neutralizes with caustic soda and you get the alkylate. The alkylate is again sent for distillation to separate out the ethyl benzene from the polyethyl benzene. So, what are the key points of this Monsanto Lumos process? There is a corrosion because you have the catalyst in a liquid phase. So, it is necessary to remove the catalyst from the product. So, it is a basically a polluting waste. Again, if you want to recover this catalyst from the product, you need to separate out the catalyst. So, obviously, these are some waste which you need to separate out routinely. So, benzene feed should be devoid of any water to prevent the destruction of the catalyst complex, necessitating an additional drying step. So, you have to absolutely be ensuring that benzene does not have any moisture content. So, you need an additional drying step, so it increases the cost. So, the catalyst complex also should be prepared independently, it is not shown here in the diagram, but it has to be prepared which acts to the cost of the process. So, obviously, all this increases investment and the operation expenses. So, moving ahead, we go to the other process, that is the gas phase process, the mobile badger process. So, in this case, ZSM5 zeolite is used in the gas phase alkylation procedure. So, this catalyst has a molecular size hole allowing for shape selectivity. So, it will only allow the ethyl benzene to pass through. Ethyl benzene molecules will diffuse freely through the pores, but polyethylene molecules cannot penetrate at all. So, there is a product selectivity. 
So the high temperature, but the issue is high temperature promotes coke deposition which deactivates the catalyst. So catalyst is again regenerated by burning of coke in oxygen poor air or appropriate so nitrogen to oxygen mixture. So catalyst, but only advantage is catalyst is highly water resistant. So it actually goes away with the benzene drying step which, for which we have seen in the Monsanto Lumos process. So mobile badger process thus offers the alkylation in the gas phase and the catalyst is devoid or it is insensitive to moisture. So these are the two advantages. So I will just discuss one by one step then you can uh, maybe you can understand it is easy. So the preheated makeup and recycling benzene stream is introduced into a multi-stage fixed bed reactor. Now the issue here is uh, first let us see this benzene. So this fresh benzene is coming here it is sent to this benzene column. Okay. So uh, here you have a mixture of benzene and ethyl benzene already present. So it is a benzene column, it will just separate out the benzene and the ethyl benzene, that is it. Its job is to separate out benzene and ethyl benzene because other products are not formed, this I have told you, it is only selective to, the catalyst selective to ethyl benzene. Now uh, this particular benzene actually is separated from the top part, it is heated up and sent it to the actual alkylator. So this is your first process even though the benzene is coming from the later stages but it is heated up and sent to the alkylation process because it requires a temperature of 670 Kelvin to 20 bar. So at this temperature again you have the fixed the catalyst bed here and here. So what you do is you send the ethene in different location. Why? The reason is it is very exothermic in nature reaction. I have told you the reaction is exothermic in nature. So as to reduce the heat of formation, it is we are doing some quenching. What is a quenching here means? We are sending cold feed stream that is cold ethene we are sending in different catalyst bed. Okay? We are sending the cold feed in different catalyst bed so that it allows the temperature to be controlled. Okay, there is a reason. So once it does that, then still uh, you know some maybe some uh, this will be forming uh, the other polyethylene benzene. Even if they are formed, still you have an option of the transalkylation reactor. So in the transalkylation reactor, whatever products which come from the end stream is fed in along with the product stream or the effluent stream, and uh, it is converted to ethyl benzene. This ethyl benzene then goes to the benzene column. It get separated off. I mean the benzene and the ethyl benzene get separated and the ethyl benzene is sent to the uh, ethyl benzene, polyethyl benzene, this column. So I will explain these two columns in the next slide. So the issue is there are two things to pay attention. The ratio of benzene to ethene at the entrance of the reactor is 8 to 15 moles. So this ratio is higher. So it means you have a higher uh, conversion because if you notice, if you see ethene to benzene ratio, this will be much lower. So it means your conversion of um, diethyl benzene will be much, much higher. This is larger than L because in LC3, I suppose I think it is 2.2 to 5, something like that. Please correct me. 2 to 5 is more than that. Temperature rise arising from the exothermic alkylation reactor to account for this you have each catalyst best it cooled by quenching with cold ethene. So here you have sending the cold ethene one by one, cold ethene is sent here. Okay. So cold ethene is sent, so it means your temperature is controlled. The product stream here is separated using distillation. So ZSM5 catalyst, these are the catalyst crossed ZSM5, a selective for ethyl benzene, polyethyl benzene production cannot, but as I told you it cannot be totally prevented. Okay. So if it is not prevented, that is why we use the transalkylization reactor. The stream from distillation section polyethylene benzene stream is combined with benzene and sent to a transalkylator where further ethyl benzene is produced. So here you are producing the ethyl benzene here, sorry, this is the here you have sent it to transalkylated benzene. Okay. Just I want to recollect, so what you do is here you have the ethyl benzene coming with polyethylene benzene also. So you have the ethyl benzene column here. So you have uh, the distillation column here. So if you take distillation column, ethyl benzene will come from the top and the heavier will come from the bottom. 
then what you do again in the last column you have the polyethylene benzene column. So, you just take out the heavier compounds and send the residue to fuel. So, the remaining unreacted compounds if any will be again be recycled. So, diethylene benzene and polyethylene benzene if there are there they will be the remaining residue is sent as fuel and the remain and the diethyl benzene and polyethylene benzene if they are formed they are sent to the transalkylating reactor here. So, just pay attention. So, you have the reactor here, transalkylated reactor here, the benzene ethyl benzene separator here. So, here only ethyl benzene gets separated from the diethyl or polyethyl benzene stream and in this final column the residue is separated and sent to the fuel and the remaining diethyl benzene and polyethylene benzene is recycled back heated and sent to the transalkylated reactor where it is converted to ethyl benzene. So, this is one. So, the dark sites I mean the dark ones are the one which are very prominent. So, the remaining then the gases coming from other than benzene let us say ethene gases. So, these are the light strippers. So, it means it will just vent off the gases. It will just take out the gases and incinerate it. So, what are the advantages? The advantages of the is the absence of aqueous waste streams. So, there is no aqueous waste stream the entire thing is gas phase operation. There is the absence of aqueous waste stream and no corrosive substances which we have used as an alkylator in the Monsanto Lumos process. So, in this mobile bad jet process you do not need to make a corrosine la corrosive lined vessel with alloy or something like that. High alloy obviously that is what I was coming the high alloy materials and brake linings need not be required in the alkylator reactor. So, equipment for catalyst recovery. So, catalyst recovery is not required because it is a gas phase catalyst. So, waste treatment here is eliminated and a larger benzene to ethene ratio. So, but, uh, in, but even though it has a larger benzene to ethene ratio. So, it means the cost for benzene separation and recirculation. So, you have more of benzene or diethyl benzene or those streams be produced. So, the cost for its recovery and recirculation will also will add up. So, you have all advantages and disadvantages present in such uh, type of system. So, overall if I want to conclude. So, we have seen two flow sheets. One is the mobile badger flow sheet. Uh, another is the your Monsanto Lumos flow sheet. The one in the liquid phase alkylation, another is the gas phase alkylation. So, they are different use different catalyst. One is the one MCM 22, another is ZSM 5. So, you must be knowing ZSM 5 is more selective towards ethyl benzene that you should remember. So, I want you to go through this textbook and also I want you to go through these two patents. So, these two patents actually what they do is they will discuss the Monsanto Lumos and the mobile badger process along with the catalysts the ZSM5 and MCM22 in detail the preparation. So, go through this then uh, we will again then move ahead in the next uh, class we will discuss more about this exothermic reactions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.